Let's see here. Can you see everything you need to see in this picture? Okay, so this right here is the temperature of this Ainsley load inside the TK calorimeter. And I guess you can probably see that the temperature was up and it is now dropping. Uh, this top trace on this oscilloscope is monitoring the signal from the pin 3 of the Aaron clock. This is its uh, duty cycle adjuster. Oops, sorry. Right here, duty cycle adjustment. Frequency I'm going to be leaving alone. This is the input from the Aaron timer to the Ainsley circuit, my Ainsley circuit. We're running on the IRF PG50 MOSFET. We have the current uh, input current monitoring just as per usual and that's this trace here current input current B Ainsley is monitoring input current B but I'm monitoring the Ainsley point A on the LaCroix digital oscilloscope over here okay so this is point A this is point B input current uh, voltage at the load temperature of the load and signal from the 555 timer okay and uh, you can see the temperature has been dropping while I've been talking and over here you can see that this is pretty flat now what I'm going to do is see the the system's actually in the uh, feedback oscillation mode right now this is the input current trace uh, from that and what I'm going to do now is just take it off of that point Okay, there you go. And try to get our trigger back here and change the time base. Voltage. That's our normal input load signal. And there's our 555 timer trace. And uh, right there, you can see that little feedback oscillation. Right there, as the timer starts to turn on, that's it right there. Now, over here on the LaCroix, you can see the spikes coming up off the trailing edge of the pulse from the Ainsley circuit point A. And what I'm going to do here is change the time base so that you can see those trailing edge spikes very clearly. And there you go. There's the trailing edge spike and then there's those, the nice uh, inductive ring down. And you can see that it's being chopped by the diode which is right up inside the load there. And of course I have my recirculation diodes on the Ainsley circuit here switched out because we're just looking at the recirculation diode in there. But I can, you know, do this for you. You can see that there is a little bit of change if I add another diode in there. Alright. So now what I'm going to do is take the circuit into the oscillation mode by moving this pot a little bit. And if I remember to turn it in the right direction, which is not that direction, let's go this way. And here we go, boing. Okay. Now we've hit that Oh, I forgot to, to point out that while we've been in the this mode with the spikes coming in, the load temperature has been rising all this time. We're up to 115 degrees C in there. So when the MOSFET is on, you know, actually being driven by a uh, clock pulse, sure, the load heats up. Now we're going to go to that oscillation mode there. So now we're in that nice 
right there. We're in that nice oscillation mode. See the input current has basically just dropped down and now it's showing that high frequency oscillation right there and the LaCroix direction sorry Okay, and there's that wild set of oscillations that uh, is happening there, and that's on the MOSFET gate, or the Ainsley load. So we got a much better picture of that a little bit earlier. That's the oscillation on the MOSFET gate, and uh, there are multiple overlaid frequencies on there. And as I change the pot, you can see that that feedback changes a little bit until it goes away and going. And when it does go away, then we're back to that nice oscillatory ring down on the trailing edge of the gate. But this is the number that's pretty important here. Okay, uh, You can see that as long as we are actually sending a good signal with a ring down to the load, the load temperature increases. Right? But then when we go into that That oscillatory ring down stage. Okay. <clears throat> Do you see? Okay, now we'll go back into the pulse mode right there.
Actions speak louder than words. More coming. 